In the summer of 2003, a scandalous discovery was made in the Bucegi Mountains area in Romania. The top-secret occult department of the intelligence services, the Department Zero, revealed the secret of this place that could have changed completely the fate of human civilization. Hidden in these mountains near the outskirts of Transylvania is located the hidden sphinx that holds new secrets. By using the most advanced technology, Pentagon detected a mysterious sealed camera in the mountain itself not far from the Romanian sphinx which was protected by an energy barrier. A complete stranger under the name Rado Chinamar witnessed things that could have changed the whole concept of humanity thanks to having earned the trust of enlightened individuals and becoming a part of a greater mystery. A small part of which he witnessed with his own eyes is linked directly to what happened at the Romanian Sphinx and this is what he shared with us. Today we are going to dive into the history of Rado Chinamar who will share with us exclusive details about the secret documents, files, research and expeditions conducted by the intelligence services which are most frequently linked to ancient alien technology. What did they discover? What use does this have for all of us today? And what is the link with the Egyptian pyramids? We are going to find out in this first part of the story about the Romanian Sphinx and the secret of Rado Chinamar. Chinamar said that Romania hadn't committed exclusively to keeping the discovery secret but yet we don't know what terms were negotiated nor any other details of what really happened there. Chinamar's opinion on the matter is as follows. For the moment, the methods being used to completely repulse any attempt to learn anything about this discovery are misinformation and lack of anything material evidence. The task is not easy but as far as I know it has been carried out successfully so far. In my opinion though, this state of affairs cannot go on much longer. I am going to analyze these aspects after I present all the details which have gradually led to this extraordinary discovery on the territory of Romania. The Pentagon carried out several secret military programs simultaneously, one of which was connected with these geodesic espionage. They invested incredible amounts of money in technology that surpassed current scientific knowledge. The source of these fabulous technologies is kept in secret, of course, and we can only guess what is the reason for that. The Pentagon owns a lot of geostationary satellites that have precise surveillance targets. In 2002, one of these satellites, based on wave technology, detected a certain structure in the depths of mountainous areas in Romania, more precisely in a specific area of the Bucegi Mountains. At first, it was thought that it was a strange karst formation that had been identified repeatedly in many places on the planet. Planet. But this turns out to be much different than we thought. Before we continue, subscribe to our channel for more interesting episodes like this one. Later, the specialists from the Department of Classified Data Analysis of the Pentagon informed their superiors that there were three aspects that raised big questions about the data recorded in the Bucegi area. First, the cavity found in the mountain had no link to the outside world because it was inside the mountain at a certain distance from its slope. Second, the formation had the shape of a tunnel, which the registered data described as very symmetrical, turning suddenly at the angle of 26 degrees toward the core of the mountain. Besides, the trajectory of the tunnel was flat. For comparison, if we consider the base of the mountain as defining, the tunnel begins at about one third of it and then continues in a perfect straight line. The third element, however, shocked Pentagon officials the most. The satellite's scan revealed two huge barriers in the solid stone interior of the structure, which blocked the beginning and the end of the tunnel. A secret source then gave Radu the honor to see a photo of the computer plan of the strange structure in the mountain core that included numerous figures and data. 
The blocked areas were marked in red, which explained that they simply repelled any kind of drilling or analysis as if they were keeping something in secret. It's very possible that it's all about something extraordinary. That's the conclusion made by few who knew about this mysterious case. This of course leads to a much more delicate question. Who created all of this? The first energy barrier at the beginning of the tunnel was erected as a wall blocking the entrance to the tunnel. The second energy barrier was like a dome or hemisphere and was located at the other end of the tunnel, blocking the exit. Even closer to the center of the mountain and what lies within. Dr. Ernst Moldashev has some interesting expeditions that have a same link in the Samadhi caves. If you are interested, we can make episodes about him as well. The Pentagon is failing to understand why the tunnel zigzagged towards the central area of the mountain, nor have they figured out the significance of the 26th degree angle that appeared in its design. The structure was situated parallel to the ground and the dome energy barrier was located vertically and was erected beneath the rock formation called the Babele. The vertical came up at approximately 40 meters height between Babele and the Sphinx of Buceji. One of the secret sources of Chinamar told him about the fastest way to reach the inside of the mountain. It's also a great mystery who were those who had created all of these structures, how they created them without outside access to the depths of the mountains but directly from within. One can assume that this was done for maximum security reasons in order to preserve the integrity of this site. The only explanation for the used technology would be that somehow they had buried the main entrance of the tunnel after they activated the energy safety barrier. However, this requires a huge amount of stone, not to mention the technology which is required for a job like this. Radu also got a special map before entering that specific region. The map corresponded to what the Pentagon had calculated. It had the easiest way to get below the surface centrally from the entrance with the starting point that was located in its slope approximately 60-70 meters from the first energy barrier located inside. This is what Chinamar said about this. As far as I was concerned, I was relatively skeptical of the decision because I was aware that those who had created the structure in question could have guessed that it was possible to enter that way and could have taken some precautions. Still, my source assured that there was a high-tech support which the United States military would provide in the form of an extremely professional facility to quickly drill into the rock. This technology used a very powerful plasma jet and a rotating magnetic field that could guarantee that they would reach the walls of the tunnel in less than two days, including the preparations needed. In case of failure, we agreed to use the shorter method of direct penetration to the energy barrier of the tunnel. The entire operation was taking place in secret, and that was the whole idea. Once they've truly investigated and figured out what exactly they needed to do to get in, the idea was that for everybody who asked questions, it would look like a very normal mission of Department Zero. No unnecessary questions. The important day has arrived, and Chinamar continues. I soon realized that I was in no position to evaluate the true value of the whole operation and that I should consider myself lucky that I got the unexpected chance to access that what I thought was probably the most important discovery of modern times. The fact that I was called by this source and that the security measures were so stringent convinced me that something of great importance had been discovered. What caught his attention was the giant hangar dug into the rock to the right of the tunnel entrance. The tunnel was perfect, 10 meters high, with high plastered walls like it was just made and naturally invoked the question, 
what technologies were used by these higher beings to be able to make such type of facilities that remained for thousands of years. It wasn't just in the Romanian mountains, it's in all ancient facilities all over the world. At the top, the hangar had a mechanical system, like a curtain, made of a translucent material which covered only a quarter of the height of the entrance. Two hemispherical structures were used by Americans. These buildings looked more like research stations from another planet and gave them a nice feeling of comfort and great security. The material they were made of was white and surrounded by hexagonal surfaces. Near the top, there was a white band of dark blue colored material. When Chinamar stopped next to one of the structures, just a few meters from one of the sides of the tunnel, his heart began to beat loudly. Beyond the white barrier, guarded by two American soldiers, they saw probably the most spectacular mystery on this planet. What was discovered in this mountainous area? After another turn, there was a perfect straight road stretching for about 50 meters, which looked very much like a subway tunnel. At the bottom, in the very heart of the mountain, there was something that looked like a huge gate, which seemed to be sliding to the left, taking up less than a quarter of the width of the gallery. This entrance was guarded by a huge sliding door. The technology the Americans had was amazing. The plasma drilling machine, which wasn't that big, required a special equipment, especially for those who were standing around it. Everything was monitored on computers, their every move in drilling to the center of the mountain. It was said that after a few meters, Rado and the mysterious gentleman finally reached one very interesting gallery, as they describe it. The energy barrier was actually an energy projection, but they never succeeded in figuring out who put it there or how it remained in working order after thousands of years. When they got to the gallery, they couldn't get through. When they examined the place, they noticed one big perfectly cut square section, which appeared to be inlaid in the wall of the mountain. On the square was drawn an equilateral triangle pointing upwards. This was the key that was left by those who built the structure. The problem with the energy barrier was, wait for it, the frequency of the vibrations. I felt that between me and the energy barrier there was some kind of compatibility, a kind of mutual magnetism and I felt I had passed successfully the personal vibration test. I kept asking myself, what level of technological and spiritual development had the creators of this real threshold for an energy check that modern science cannot understand, let alone reproduce in any way, shape or form. But Radu passed through the barrier freely and the only thing he felt was a pleasurable tickle in his body. Everyone else who tried to pass got a severe headache, dizziness and no see. Chinamar pressed the switch removing the barrier temporarily. The stone door at the entrance began to slide open quietly, almost without any noise. That's when they saw the great gallery, which was illuminated without any light source present. It ended in a giant hole inside the mountain. The end of the great gallery led to another hole, but unlike in the new room, which they called the Hall of Projections, was circular. Radu said that when they entered into the Hall of Projections, they had the feeling that they were already in another world. The floor was the same as in the other gallery, but it featured turquoise and everything around them they could see certainly didn't look like anything they had ever seen on Earth. Right from the beginning, their attention was nailed at the back of the room. Halfway through its diameter, the hole was connected to the stone wall of the mountain. Half of the wall of the Hall of Projections was actually the stone wall of the mountain. The stone walls were approximately 10-20 meters high and inside them, they found three huge tunnel entrances. One in front 
and two other symmetrically placed on each side of it. It's interesting that in the hole itself they saw stone tables in the shape of the letter T which were placed along the walls. T is coming from the Greek Theos which in Greek means God. There were also interesting writings that were very complex and they couldn't read them. But they managed to find similarities in the form of triangles and circles in the writings. There were five tables on each side and on some of the tables there were objects that were indefinable. They looked like some scientific instruments but were unknown until their discovery. The story of Radu goes as follows. I tried to move one of them but it was very well anchored in the ground. The fine wires were extremely flexible and light and inside them small pulses of light could be seen that were gliding along their entire length. Two of the tables were empty, covered only by a fine layer of orange colored dust. The real surprise came with the distinctive element that was the reason for the scientists to call the room the Hall of Projections. When a man stood before a table, a hologram image appeared which represented aspects of a scientific field. The images were three-dimensional in color, approximately two and a half meters tall. The projections appeared on their own as if by themselves but at the same time they were dependent on the person who was projecting them. I touched lightly one of the squares which was the largest and the hologram began to present an anatomical structure of the human body. Actually, I quickly realized that it was my own body from the specific mark I had on my arm. Even though I wasn't moving, I saw a holographic image of different parts of my body that kept changing, presenting me from different angles. If I lifted my finger from the square, the images with plants and animals came back. If I moved my finger towards the middle of the square, the image showed the inside of my body, showing me the projection of my internal organs according to the position of my finger on the square. I realized that when I was moving my finger in a certain way, I was getting a magnified image of the area that I was observing. It was all like a dream, but how all of this advanced technology was right there, hidden for millennia. And who had built this? It was beyond the wildest dreams of all scientists. When someone was touching other squares, they glowed in orange and again the unfamiliar writing appeared. There was a detailed analysis of the genetics of the two individuals and options to create a new hybrid form between those who pressed the squares, which is outrageous. It was a detailed description how to make it happen, how to do it if you want to create it and what to do to do things in the right way. The theory that the beginning of the human civilization many years ago was perhaps set in a hybrid way may be true. It's like those who created this wanted to leave all this priceless treasure, but they didn't want us to know who they were. In the Hall of Projections, there were also projections from the field of physics, mathematics, astronomy, architecture, geometry, and the field that represented the characteristics of several intelligent races that didn't look much like humans. The information was so extensive that the several teams of scientists could have spent several years there without worrying that it would be depleted. All of this gave the impression of a vast universal library which was synthesized in an ingenious way by a mysterious, extremely advanced civilization in a spiritual and in a technological way. Notice what they had run into. They stumbled upon a device which was cylindrical in shape. They found it around one corner. There were wires, kind of wires, around it. We cannot tell if it's the cables we are familiar with, something that look like cables, with sensors on the edges, and they thought it was an ancient thinking machine. What would you encounter nowadays as a thinking machine is, if you search deep, you will find 
One of the methods that the governments and the secret societies are using to monitor and control people that they need is called remote viewing. Remote viewing is the ability to see what is happening in real time in whichever point on planet Earth you want. Being able to observe from a distance wirelessly through the free energy, the potential and the quantum field which we have all within and around us. Remote viewing is just a modern way to express what we can do by default. Chinamar suggested that this machine was designed by its creators to be approximately three and a half meters, so probably the creature that was connected to the sensors inside has been able to control a very large psychic energy and channel it accordingly. At a distance of approximately 10 meters behind the command panel, there was a dome and in front of it a vessel shaped like an antique amphora. The remarkable thing here is that the contents of the amphora were one of the main things of the discovery. There weren't any patterns or writings on it. In a weird way, the inner walls of the amphora emitted a slight blue light that gave even more magical reflections to the white dust. It was made of reddish metal and didn't have handles. The sleek cover made it impossible to see what was inside, but under a special light, a very fine shimmering white powder was visible. After analyzing this powder, they discovered that it represented the unknown crystalline structure of a monatomic gold. It's a derivative of gold and it has a brilliant white color. Its atoms are arranged in a two-dimensional grid unlike the ordinary gold which has a yellow color and its atoms are arranged in three dimensions. It's very hard to get this type of gold powder especially in this very high purity as described in some ancient texts and the few authentic alchemical directions from the Middle East. Actually, to this day, the modern science cannot obtain this extraordinary purity of monatomic gold, but even as such, it has incredible therapeutic effects on living tissues. The secret of this powder is that it mostly stimulates certain energy flows and changes the cell structure and more specifically the neurons. In other words, it causes a very rapid rejuvenation process and this has been used by some mystical individuals in the past to be able to live more than 200 years if they of course consume this type of substance from time to time. In a specific time, with specific instructions, life can last many years and retain its physical body in the same shape. This of course is unknown to mankind, but there are quite few strange stories about immortality. Is this how the mysterious Count Saint Germain did it, who traveled through the centuries and every time people saw him and communicated with him, he looked exactly the same? Ancient alchemist, reality traveler. When scientists examined the powder, they realized that, pay attention here, it was mixed with another element unknown to Earth to this day. When Chinamar stepped on the surface of the square in front of a small dome in the center, he was left speechless. A huge hologram appeared with moving elements projected from the slit of the dome. He quickly understood that in front of him is humanity's distant past since its creation. Although it was just a brief presentation of our past, it contained information about the hidden origins of humanity and on the subject he says the following. I became convinced of the falsity of Darwin's theory of evolution as far as the human species is concerned. His basic mistake was not so much in the concept, which is common knowledge, but in the ignorance of specific elements that happened on Earth in the remote past. The aspects that I saw were synthesized and realized in an extremely intelligent and at the same time in a deeply intuitive way. I felt my legs go soft with emotion and I got down on my knees, continuing to observe the real images of the most important aspects of human history, including its true origins, which create so much controversy 
these days. Unfortunately, he was not allowed to share more on this subject. The only thing he said is this. It's amazing how what is believed to have actually happened is largely a lie, while myths and legends, which fill books with tales and which are considered by most people to be the product of a vivid imagination, are almost entirely real. Over time, this weird distortion has caused many problems and conflicts between people. The information that he got led him to the conclusion that the whole complex located in the mountains was at least 55,000 years old. The lessons were seemingly very easy to understand and simple, but at the same time filled with so much details that anyone would be confused when setting out to explore them. I saw the truth about the Egyptian civilization and the way the structures were built on the territory of Egypt. And the truth that is completely different from the nonsense maintained today by Egyptologists. I saw what really happened during the Great Flood, where are the roots of the next human race. At first, he thought that the holographic projection would show him the origin of mankind to the moment when the mountain was created. Then, he was surprised because the holographic projections began to present the development and life of different races and civilizations to the 5th century AD. However, no one can say what was the reason for the historical information to end right at that point. He saw the amazing presentations of images from the life of Jesus. He said that the events that took place were much more astonishing than those presented in the Gospel. The projections also revealed many of the people who were on the hill during Jesus' crucifixion, people who were not of his time, but had come there from other historical periods. Operation Trojan Horse, for example. Those human beings had the same clothing as the jewels present at the moment of the crucifixion, yet had completely different features and for that reason they were hiding their faces under the hem of their clothes. The hologram also presented part of lives and the spiritual missions of other extraordinary personalities. He went on saying that he had also seen the actions of great spiritual reformers from approximately 18-20,000 years ago that are absolutely unknown today. The projection continued only for an hour and a half and he managed to be extremely focused during that period to remember everything what was given to him as information so he could share it with all the secret agents around him and possibly to give us some of that information as well. After the disappearance of the hologram, I stayed still for a while, staring into nothingness. After Radu shared the story about his expedition to the underground secrets of the Romanian Sphinx, he returned to his normal life and was no more working with secret agents. His story had already been published and he was trying to keep his identity a secret. His publisher forwarded him only the most significant reviews. The interesting thing is that during that time, he was contacted by intermediary on behalf of some Tibetan Lama, a fact which at that stage seemed very strange. The Lama later turned out to be a quite mysterious person himself. He insisted to meet Radu personally at his villa in Bucharest to introduce him to the mystic Lama who would take him to one of the caves in Tibet to introduce him to the goddess Machandi. In his upcoming trip he discovers new secrets and he is in shock because this time he found himself in the middle of an event that is occurring in a different time and space and experiences a sensation of traveling through time. Watch the episode until the end to find out exactly what he meant by traveling through time. We're going to challenge you once again. So Radu and the mysterious gentleman agreed to meet in two days. When the time of the meeting came, Radu miraculously found the address immediately among the many houses and was kindly welcomed. The man insisted to keep his identity a secret. So Radu called him by the ally Eleanor. Chinamar started questioning Eleanor, 
why it's so important for everything to happen this way. And Eleanor answered him that soon all the answers will come to him and he will establish a connection with his physical self. At this point, Rado wondered what's so strange and different in this completely ordinary looking man in his mid-30s. The problem is that actually I'm 62 years old. Rado was stunned. He decided to give him a chance to explain how was that possible. Eleanor expected this reaction, so he gave him his ID in which it was written that he was born in 1942. But how was that possible? The picture in the document he showed was undoubtedly him, but the shocking thing was that he hadn't changed at all from the moment the picture was taken and he literally looked exactly the same way. Of course, Radu Chinamar thought all of this was one big lie, a big fraud, but wondered who would bother fake his documents just to lie about their age. I was born in Oradea under the most normal conditions. I lived there until I was 28 years old when I moved to Bucharest. Then a very decisive event happened in my life. One day I received a registered letter but the sender's name was unknown to me. The sender's address was at post office box at one of the post offices here in Bucharest. Intrigued, I opened the envelope and found several beautifully written pages with a relatively clumsy language phrasing. Then I learned with a great astonishment that the person who wrote the letter was my own ancestor of whom neither I nor my parents knew anything. Yet somehow, in a strange way, the author of the letter seemed to know me very well, mentioning some of the important events in my life and also expressing some proper observations about every member of my family. I was asked not to disclose the contents of this letter to anyone because it exposes information that is precious to me. If those parts of the letter amazed me, the following ones puzzled me. Apparently my predecessor was from my father's ancestry, but the real problem was that he claimed that he was born in 1424 in Germany in an area that in the present day would be around the city of Köln. Here comes the question, is there an extraterrestrial intervention and the priests, the gods who came down from heaven, what were they actually like, what did they leave behind and what did they teach our ancient civilizations? From this I concluded that the actions of the master alchemist were some kind of spiritual inheritance a particular tradition, a tradition that rooted in the very distant past of the humanity. Radu was left speechless from what he heard from Eleanor, but the questions kept coming into his mind. He only asked his ancestor why he had chosen to trust him by giving him this very special object. Fate made it so that I happened to be the last male descendant of the main branch of my family tree that interested my ancestor. And yes, if you're wondering, the object is with me and no, unfortunately I didn't get it directly from him due to security measures which I'm not going to elaborate. Rado was so excited that he asked to see the object and when Eleanor showed it to him, he shared the following with us. It was made out of metal cube and the approximate length of its side was 15 centimeters and looked like a net with a big loop with a rhomboic shape. Inside that cube was a sphere which was made of the same metal. Exactly how this object was created surely only the initiated in alchemy know. For starters, the Lama revealed many secrets to Chinamar. One of them about the creature named Idam. In Tibet, there was a certain level of spiritual practice where the disciple, under the careful guidance of his teacher, begins to apply the technique to create Idam, a creature which is a type of a guardian. The procedure was very complicated and difficult to execute and an extreme precision was required for the construction of a colored sand mandala and the student had to make a constant efforts to successfully master certain mental techniques 
for concentration and visualization. Those who succeeded in creating Edam decided to leave it to accompany them throughout their physical life while they were evolving along their spiritual path. Others took what they needed at the time or for the next few years and then released it and thus they continued on even further. Essentially, the nature of Edam is purely mental. In brief, the Edam is the quintessence of the mental energy of the person who created it and summoned it, the energy that comes from peculiarities of his personality and subconscious. Now you will enter this mountain and find the answers to all of your questions concerning the purpose of this journey. This moment is important as it will create a series of positive events that will be triggered in a snowball effect and you will take an active part in the process. According to the notes we have, Radu entered the cave and saw a goddess who described as entering slowly and divine. Coming from the end of the mountain hallway was unexpected, it was mystical and for everyone who don't believe that point of view, Radu shares the following. I am aware that I will never be able to fully describe in words what I felt in those extraordinary moments. We are accustomed to a life in a much more limited reality that cannot offer us the much richer and multicolored range of experiences and sensations of words higher than the physical. The mind of the ordinary man is so attached to the dimension that they inhabits and to his pursuits that they encounter a reality exceeding their capacity for understanding, tend to block and even deny what they perceive. By different situation, Radu means that for the first time in his life, he was seeing a being from another world. The strange thing is that what he describes doesn't resemble any of the known human races and in the first moments he could not control his thoughts, emotions and actions and it was as if his mind had been taken over by the contact with the being in front of him. This is so-called channeling when one who decides to accept first to surrender merges in a way with the one with whom he has made a channel and so in this way the other has control is not the right word but it's appropriate in this case over his actions, thoughts and emotions. The channeling with the appropriate frequency settings and vibrations acts the same way as hypnosis for example they just differ in their form. Her skin was blue, tinged with dark blue, she had celestial eyes. The part of the eyes that in the humans was white had a bright yellow color and her iris was dark green. Thanks to the goddess, Chinamar received special training for enlightenment. After his two amazing adventures quite expectedly, Radu changes his lifestyle and his view of the world completely. Already an enlightened person, he devotes himself to a deeper studying of the realm of esotericism and the spiritual. Thanks to Eleanor, he also became passionate about alchemy. I began to realize that nothing in life is random and our encounters and relationships with certain people that leave behind deep mental and emotional scars are actually the result of mysterious events that only seem chaotic but in reality have their specific purpose. One quiet evening while Rado was sitting at home and thinking on what he had learned and what had happened to him so far, one of his secret visitors visited him at home and was very surprised. The reason was that it was required from Radu to make contact with the enlightened Lama he was with in Tibet. In return upon successful contact, he would receive a very high position in Department Zero as an expert consultant which would have opened new opportunities to uncover even more mysteries and riddles. Having received this, Radu set out on another expedition, more specifically to the tunnel leading to Egypt. In the aftermath, one of the extraordinary situations in which he fell into the Hall of Projections, three tunnels are found and one of them shocked everyone because it led to Egypt. 
The tunnel was thousands of miles long, even though they used unknown ordinary people at that time. Top secret cars as they described them and devices to reach their final destination that were forced several times to stop for a bit at some of the stations that Rado wasn't allowed to give more details about. After a long journey, the moment had finally arrived that the device we may call similar to our cars signaled that they were approaching their final destination. It's important to clarify that Rado Chinamar is sharing a lot of secrets with us, but he also hides a lot of things, and we think you can see why. What Rado witnessed had nothing to do with the old Egyptian civilization or the pyramids or the Sphinx. The space at the end of the tunnel was perhaps the greatest mystery, the reason for its creation was unknown, it was extremely ancient. In comparison, it was more than 30,000 years older than the Egyptian civilization, but was constructed later than the Hall of Projections. It was pretty deep underground on another continent somewhere near Cairo in a tunnel mysteriously created by some space-time invention. What I found most disturbing was the fact that I was next to something hidden from almost the entire world whose significance no one knew. The first was that the whole inside was illuminated without having its own light source as if by itself, considering that the place was more than 40,000 years old and underground that it had no ventilation, no windows, no touch of air, inside it should be extremely dark, and yet it's extremely bright with a warm yellow light. It turned out that the thin layer covering the walls was very special and had an organic character. It was a life form unknown at that time, based on Uterium, a silvery transition metal, a rare earth element. The technology used to embed it has been preserved for thousands of years. One of the interesting finds of Chinamar in the occult hole was a platform made of yellow metal, probably gold, that was floating in the air. Its surface area was approximately 2 meters, the platform looked a lot like a surfboard and it was no more than 3 centimeters thick. The only accessory on the platform was a dark blue crystal in the form, of course, of a pyramid. The device was only working if a person managed to connect to the vibration and frequency that came out of the crystal, otherwise it looked like it was broken. If you accidentally lost focus while you are in contact with it, the platform would fall down and go back to the starting position, levitating very, very gently, and as if had been restarted and you had to start all over again. It looked like the crystal itself was set from an energy standpoint to handle and facilitate contact with human consciousness when interacting with human consciousness, so that we can't help but ask the question, who and how has constructed this whole invention? The tremendous discovery of which he had witnessed in the occult hole was that so-called time machine. This, they say, was a device that could project a man into the future, the past or the present. It's about time travel of the consciousness. The consciousness was experiencing all that was happening and the body wasn't moving. When the scientists tried to investigate where this machine came from, who created it, the machine just refused to give an answer. I had the distinct feeling that the light around me became more subdued and the shapes of the objects were somehow blurring. I suddenly started sweating and shaking. We'd like to add something here about the time machine. Many people believe that it's impossible to build a time machine. Because in principle, time is an illusion and the time, it's a three-dimensional projection of what all of us on planet Earth have accepted as a condition for existence. But in principle, there are many things that are beyond its reach. Time is an illusion. We know very well that the past and the future are illusions and that everything exists in the moment, here and now. It's important to add and may everyone accept and understand it as they fit, 
that the time machine does not return you back into the past but takes you back to a different past into a different reality that is very close to that past but not a hundred percent the same it's impossible for a person to go back to the same past since it's already past if they go back successfully there are such experiments physical and mental they find themselves in a very similar very close parallel reality close to that moment of happening and they pick up specific information from there in order to bring it back to the moment of here and now but because everything is now basically that's why they can enter a different parallel reality forward or backward precisely because they already exist in the moment of here and now it was something like a clear darkness then i felt myself falling through some kind of a tunnel but upwards then i heard a familiar woman's voice after a while i saw myself in the cave in tibet with the goddess machandi then i felt the same emotions as in that previous moment then somehow the picture became unstable and then it completely disappeared Minutes after that, he closed his eyes again and three creatures appeared in front of him that looked very much like people, but they certainly weren't humans because they had very different features. When he tried to focus and examine them in a little more detail, he described them like this. I was surprised by the look of them, mostly from the deeply negative empathic feeling that I felt around them that repulsed me to such an extent that I was brought back to reality. Before leaving the site, something even more confusing happened. The team of scientists using a super-powered computer detected an unfinished tunnel starting at the Pyramid of Heops that was going in the direction of the occult tunnel but after two-thirds of the way suddenly changing direction downwards deep in the ground. Apparently those who started building the tunnel from the Pyramid of Cheops knew about the one in the occult chamber. But the question here is why they wanted to reach the hole and how did they find out its existence? He says that those who built the pyramid also had access to the occult hole and were very aware of its secrets or of the mechanisms and possibilities that were used in it. Then, Radu received classified information from a US ape agent who gave him information about the tunnel under the pyramid of Cheops. I'm sorry, I can't share more details. What I can tell you for sure is that those who constructed the tunnel underneath the Pyramid of Cheops were from a very different civilization than those who created the occult hull. We have solid evidence to support this. Those who dug the tunnel under the pyramid were of the reptilian species. We found the skeleton of one of them in a tunnel. The tunnel was sealed and its entrance was hidden in a very elaborate way. In the structure of the pyramid. Of course, most likely when he says reptilian, he means the ancient race of reptiles. They've been talked about for a long time, their various conspiracies and points of view, and the common one is that they've imprisoned us in a three-dimensional matrix which encompasses the planet Earth, but over time they have imprisoned themselves because they have adapted too much to the life on planet Earth and currently want to find a way out and escape by screwing up the human civilization. Of course, it's argued that they don't live in the visible world and on the surface, but in the subterranean recesses of planet Earth. And maybe this tunnel under the pyramid is linked to the story of the legendary labyrinth beneath the Sphinx and the library of knowledge told to us by Thought the Atlantean. Is that so, we cannot know for certain, but there are always traces left in time for the wise to follow as long as there is enough desire. 
the information that we have received the most as civilization as details we can examine from Hermes or Thoth the Atlantean who describes in details in his Emirates tablets what happened to Atlantis, what happened in ancient Egypt, what is the encoded knowledge, what his knowledge is that he gave us humans and how we can use it to realize who we truly are.